Got a PlayStation 5, but running out of storage? Are you absolutely sick to death of Warzone taking up the entirety of your SSD? Then good news folks, because in this video we're going to show you how easy it is to actually upgrade your PlayStation 5 storage. It's no secret that you only get around about 650 gig on this thing, and with games getting bigger and bigger, I think upgrading your storage is going to be a pretty smart move. Upgrading this should actually be pretty straightforward. All you need is a screwdriver, Phillips crosshead, and then of course your SSD itself. Now on a PlayStation 4 you would have used one of these, in fact if you want to see my video upgrading a PlayStation 4, you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. But this is a SATA SSD, and this is actually a fair bit slower and quite a lot bigger, whereas the more modern drives look something along the lines of these. These are PCIe drives, these are super fast Gen 4. Samsung actually reached out and wanted to sponsor this video, so we're using the 980 Pro. And you probably notice that we've got two here. One is actually the base drive, and then the other one is more aimed at the PlayStation 5 because this comes with a heatsink on it. Both of these drives are absolutely insane when it comes to read and write speeds. You can actually get up to 7,000 megabytes reads, which is absolutely insane. Now this is absolutely crucial because Sony say you need a drive over 5,500 megabyte reads. So you can't just grab any old drive off of the street. It's gotta be Gen 4, it's gotta be over the specifications. And it's fair to say that with 7,000, we're going above and beyond. Let's get started though and actually take this thing apart, which might sound quite scary, but we're quite literally just taking off a faceplate. We'll lay this down flat with a PlayStation logo facing downwards and the drive located at the top. We'll then take the base off, which if you have one of the original PlayStation 5s, you do actually need a flathead screwdriver. So technically I lied when I said you only need two things. The stand just pops off and you can put that to one side. Depending on your experience with upgrading things, this bit could be a little bit scary, but I don't think it's going to be particularly uh, easy to break in a thing, but this should require a little bit of force. You want to make sure that you're grabbing the top and holding the bottom as well, and you're basically just flipping this up. <laughs> I mean, I think a screw would have been easier, but my job is not to make this look easy. My job is to be realistic. Sounded scary, but it's all going according to plan. <laughs> we have our PS5 plate. You can see the mechanism here. It's just essentially a series of pins. So once you get these two out of the top, then the rest just pulls off this way. You've got to be going along with the PlayStation. So we'll pop this down alongside our stand. And then when you look at the PlayStation, you'll see that there's this very long gray bay here. You've got a single small Phillips crosshead. And this is exactly where we need to put our SSD. So we'll grab our smaller screwdriver and we will undo this screw. This cover then pulls off very quick and easy and then underneath you can see you have your SSD bay. You'll notice that it can take different sizes of solid state drive. You have this screw here that you need to remove, then plop your drive in and then you just fix it back down with that same screw. So let's take that screw out. We'll grab our Samsung 980 Pro SSD. We will remove this from the box and then you can actually see the SSD for yourself. Again, please make sure that you do get one that has a heat sink on it because we don't want our SSD to overheat. We wanna make sure we're getting the best possible sustained performance. And of course, when it comes to long life and endurance, again, we don't wanna compromise that by the thing getting too hot. But otherwise, it is very straightforward. You just line up the SSD with the grooves in the slots. You push it in until it sort of clicks into place. We get the bottom half of the screw and we push that into the slot. We lower the whole thing down, pick up the top half of the screw, and then fix it down into place with the screwdriver. And then that is pretty much all of the dirty work complete. You can see that this really isn't a particularly difficult process. You don't need to dive deep into the depths of the PlayStation 5. This bay is all very clearly laid out for you and it is very quick, easy and simple. So let's pop this top cover back on, fix that down into place, grab our faceplate again, do the reverse this time. Then you can grab your base again, clip this over the end, screw it back into place, and then you should have your PlayStation 5 upgraded and ready to go. Now that your upgrade is complete, you can bring your PlayStation back downstairs, reconnect your power and HDMI, and an ethernet to be fair, because I'm fancy. Turn it on. Instead of the usual PlayStation screen, you're gonna be greeted with a warning to say that if you want to use this, everything on the drive will be formatted and thus deleted. So if this has anything of value on it whatsoever, any files that you need to rescue, this is pretty much your last chance to do it before they're gone forever. This is a brand new SSD, so we'll select formats. It will do a quick format. Our read speed is above the specifications, so we'll select OK. M.2 SSD has been formatted, loading back into the PlayStation menu. And now if we go over to settings and storage, you should see that we have 662 gigabytes on our main internal drive. 
But if we go down to M.2 storage, you can see we have one terabyte free. So you can download Call of Duty Warzone to your heart's content. You can change between the two by going to installation location, and then you've got console storage or M.2. If your SSD is already pretty full, then you might want to go to a game like Godfall and then select Move Games and Apps. You can do this in bulk rather than just one by one, but here we're just gonna select Godfall, we're gonna select Move, OK. And because this is a Gen 4 SSD to a Gen 4 SSD, this should actually move incredibly quick. And you can see that around about 25 gig is transferring in, what's that, like 15, 20, 25 seconds? And then of course, just to check that it actually works, we will open up our PlayStation 5 Godfall. And then here we are, playing a game on the M.2 SSD. The only real caveat is that you need to have a drive that's PCI Gen 4, needs to be over 5,500 read speed, and you need to be using the latest version of the PlayStation 5 software to actually support an M.2 SSD. But as you can see, it is incredibly simple. If you want to check out current pricing on one of these drives, then you can find that linked in the description below. But a massive thank you for watching. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it. Any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, get subscribed for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.